Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of Saturday night special. So it's been an adventurous past couple of weeks. We had our Good the Land Fest this past weekend that I attended over in Lindale, Texas and had a fantastic time. And we got lots of video of that event that I'm gonna be sharing with you real soon. I got to meet up with a lot of uh, new creators that I had never met before at this event. Met a lot of new friends out there and met a lot of viewers and fans of the channel. So it was uh, great, all you guys that came out to the event to uh, uh, meet all the creators and all you guys that came up to me to you know, shake my hand, talk to me. Thank you very much. It was a, it was a wonderful trip out there. I just I can't say enough of how awesome it is to be able to take place in these events like this and uh, be able to travel to new places around the country and, and see some of you folks and talk to you and and uh, meet some of the other creators out there across YouTube as well. We had a we had a lot of fun. The museum is an excellent place to go and see, and uh, I think everybody had a really good time there. It was uh, it was a bigger event than what they expected it to be, and they are planning on trying to make this an annual thing. So they are working on doing this again next year. Uh, it'll be in October though next year instead of November. So. Uh, I'm planning on going to the next one because I had a good time. I, I had a lot of fun. So, yeah, everything was great. I'm going to have some videos to come to you real soon. And I want to thank my friends over at CK Worldwide for the uh, cool new hat. Just got that today in the mail. Uh, I, had, I had visited with them over at Fabtech, and uh, they sent me a catalog and a, and a fresh hat there. And I've been getting quite a few boxes of uh, viewer mail in the past couple of weeks. I've got three items right here that I want to share with you, all from the uh, all from Europe. We've got three different viewer mail that all come from over there, so we're going to share that. I've also got some more machining that I'm going to share with you, some stuff that I've done at the day job, and that's just because I haven't been out here in the shop yet uh, getting some footage. I, I do have some footage for you. I've got a coupling right there that we did an internal keyway on the shaper, so I'm going to be sharing that with you real soon. But the other project right here, the uh, the shaft for the K and T mill, got a lot of guys asking about that. That's next in line. We're going to start that very soon. So that's what that's what's on the agenda is get started on that shaft, and uh, hopefully bring that to you uh, in the coming in the coming week or so. But I've got lots of video out there to uh, edit and and get out on YouTube for our trip. You know, whenever we went to Atlanta. And uh, of course, the Texas event. So I got a lot of editing. I just don't seem to have a whole lot of time. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and do our viewer mail. I got the other project to share with you. And we have another Machinery's Handbook that we're going to be giving away. So we have a 19th edition Machinery's Handbook this week. And I'm not really sure if this is who it's from because it was addressed to me, but it was this name on the address uh, Jonathan Brown. So I don't know if it, this was from Jonathan Brown. Now the return address said McCormick, South Carolina. So if this is from Jonathan Brown, thank you very much. If this is not, then uh, I don't know. We got another Machinery's Handbook to give away. This is very clean. It's been well taken care of. And the owner's name of this previously is right here, Gordon Armstrong. So Gordon Armstrong used to own this, <coughs> excuse me, you used to own that book right there. So we have a total now of 1,195 entries into the Machinery's Handbook giveaway. All right, so I put the num I put that into the random number generator, and it drew number 922 in my list. So the winner is James Woodend from Selma, California. Congratulations, man. I'm going to send you this book right here. You have just won that. So, James's favorite type of content is Saturday Night Special, the Shaper footage, and also mill and lathe work. So, awesome. And content that he'd like to see more of, he just simply says, same as the current and machining porn. <laughs> That's what he likes. So, uh, thank you, James. I'm glad to hear that you like SNS and the Shaper and all the lathe and the, and the mill work. So, we will be getting this book coming to you very soon and a couple of A-bomb stickers to go there with it, all right? I've got a really special viewer gift right here, and I wanna talk about this and uh, go over what it is and who it's from there. So this is for a multi-fix style of tool post, which is what I have on both my Monarch and the Victor Lathe. Uh, mine's the original multi-fix. So 
This is a new style blade holder from Pee Wee Tools. And you got the PWT right there on this tool holder. So that is Pee Wee Tools, Peter Wendelt, all right? And he's over in Germany. He is the owner of this company, Pee Wee Tools. And he builds all of these tool posts, all the holders, and he's got many, many different size of these tool posts. And I'm, and I'm here to tell you, I've been corresponding back and forth uh, in email to Peter for uh, quite a few weeks now. And we spoke before uh, a while back, but Peter seems to have more knowledge on the multi-fix style of tool post than anybody I've ever, I, I mean, I don't really know anybody that, that's an expert on these tools, but Peter definitely is. This, you can definitely tell that this is his passion, is building these tools for this style of tool post. And not only that, he knows the entire history of the Multifix brand and the other companies that took over that after the original Multifix, uh, the, the original owner of the Multifix, the, uh, the creator, designer of that, of that brand. So he has been sharing a lot of that knowledge uh, through email and I've been uh, kind of learning about the history of the Multifix and the other brands that follow and, and the other brands that are out there now. There's other companies that are making this style of tool post. Um, but anyway, he wanted to send this. This is one that he designed, and it's for holding the blades, all right? So a lot of you guys are familiar with a, with a blade like this that uses self-grip carbide inserts, these guys right here. All right, a GTN3, so this is a number three size carbide insert that goes into the end of the blade just like this you just push it in there I usually take a uh, nylon hammer and just tap it a couple times and then as you apply pressure you know when you're cutting it just forces it in there and it stays there all right and then you got this little tool that you stick in there and spin it and it pops it out of there okay so Peter has designed this tool holder so it is more effective and works better than the original style blade holder like I have for the multi-fix, okay? He's got it designed so that this is a standard size blade, I believe 32 millimeter. So you could purchase this holder from him and you know, if you have this blade already, I believe it's a 32 millimeter or about an inch and a quarter. Yeah, so it's about an inch and a quarter. Yeah, so I think that's considered a 32 millimeter tall parting blade. And what he was trying to explain to me through email is that the original design is not made for these new style of uh, parting blades or, you know, insert blades right there. So he's got this one developed to hold this blade right here. And he sent this to me as well as the blade and the inserts and also the high speed steel blade that goes with it also okay so let's see if we can get this out of this plastic right there so there's one of the original style blades that fit in there as well very nice so what I was uh, wanting to, to mention about this this tool as well is that uh, Peter has just been great on uh, trying to, uh, you know, teach me the, the history of these tools. You know, there, there's kind of a mystery there of when they were developed and who made them and, and who's making them now, the different brands that's out there and things like that. So I'm really wanting to try to keep, continue to brush up on the knowledge of the Multifix brand and bring you another video to try to explain a little bit more of this information that has been relayed to me through Peter Okay, so I'm going to try to, you know, do my homework and uh, get my knowledge out there uh, on this, on these tools. But in the meantime, for you guys that are interested in these right here, uh, not only the tools, but, you know, parts. If you need pieces and parts for your multi-fix, he sells all that. And I, I can't remember how many sizes he told me that he makes now, but he's got over 20 different models of sizing for these multi-fix he's got he showed me a picture of one of these multi-fix i mean this thing was massive right and inside sitting inside of the normal not this but the regular style tool holder 
was another one, a small one, sitting inside there on there. So, I mean, they go from like this big or smaller, I mean, all the way up to great big monsters. So he's really got a cool system over there. And the, the website is still in um, German, I believe, but he is working on uh, making websites for like the U.S. guys. He's trying to get it set up so that he, he can sell to all the U.S. people. But I've got his link there so you can go to him, send him an email, and, and he will work with you on, um, on getting some tool holders or whatever you want, you know. So anyway, Peter, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this tool holder out with the with the new blade right here and the in the insert. So, and I, I think that's going to be work a little bit better because my mine is a number four that I use, which is bigger than this. So this is a more narrow tool. So three, just over three millimeter is the width of that that insert right there. All right, so Pee Wee Tools, go check them out. I have a, a link down in the video description for you. Okay. There's our next uh, group of items for uh, our viewer mail here. And this, this comes from Habert, all the way from Poland. And sent a really nice letter there. And, and uh, this is some tools that he had kind of gathered up that he wanted to send me. All metric. So we've got tap starting at one millimeter and go all the way up to three and a half millimeter. Nice set of taps right there, which I... I don't think I have any of those sizes right there. Very cool. And we've got some dies, different size dies. We have a 13 millimeter end mill. And this was a this is a, a Morse shank, a taper shank on here. It looks like a Morse number one taper shank. And all these are Polish made, by the way. All right, we've got one more right here. I think this is really cool with the you know the the polish writing in the boxes i'm definitely going to save that and put that in my cabinet but what he's got right here is a is a little precision square and i believe in his letter he was talking about this being a class three as far as the accuracy goes and you can see a three on there so very nice these are actually very handy. I've got a couple that I use sometimes when you're doing setups in the milling machine and you need to line up some lines and things like that. But these are just very nice little squares to have. So very cool Polish gifts all the way from Poland. So hey Bert, thank you very much. Uh, he absolutely loves watching the videos and and uh, tunes in every week and he sent a really nice letter. So uh, thank you very much for these tools. So here's our next uh, viewer gift right here in this comes all the way from the UK. We got a really cool stair at box right there. And then there was another little gift in there that was for Abby. And uh, she wanted me to share that with you guys. So she got a kick out of hers. So this is from Bob Johnstone. And he is from Hales Owen, West Midlands, the UK. All right. And uh, this is something he come across and he wanted to send me. So this is really cool because this is going to be the first mic that I that I can remember that I got from the uh, Scotland uh, factory over there. So Starrett has a plant over there, and and I believe that's where this mic originated from. I believe this has got some vintage to it because they used to put them in the uh, the eyeglass cases right here. But what we have is a 25 millimeter Starrett micrometer. Let me pull this out of there. Now I don't know what the deal with the with the dust the the dust <laughs> the rust on it. It's very dusty. I mean, it's like this thing has got steel grinding dust in there. I'm not really sure. And this is the way that he had found it, but it can definitely be soaked and cleaned up and uh, made to work and look and function like a good micrometer again. But very cool that it's a 25 millimeter Starrett mic, and in there on the on the body, it says Great Britain, the LS Starrett Company, Great Great Britain. So that's very cool of Bob to uh, send that to me. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. We're gonna we're gonna try to get this case cleaned up some. I'm not really sure uh, the the best way to tackle this dust that's in here. Maybe just use some air and try to blow it out. This thing needs to have a really good soak and get any of this rust and corrosion that's off of it. But I like it, man. That's very neat. So thank you, Bob, very much for that. 
25 millimeter Starrett mic. And then this is the one that he had sent for uh, Abby and she absolutely loved it. So she got her some very tiny little eight, um, Abby, Abby torque wrenches right here. I believe these are also, it says made in England. Yep, it just says uh, made in England. And let's see, this one says Bedford, made in England. So two tiny little wrenches must be for instrumentation. So thank you, Bob, very much for the gifts for uh, both of me and Abby. Really appreciate it, man. Well, I got another heavy load of iron that I brought home today. This is some stuff that I've had at work, some of my personal tools and some other things that I had down there that I've been just, it's been at work. So I finally got them all loaded up and uh, brought them home. And I guess while we're on the subject here, might be a good time to go ahead and tell you that I traded in the scat pack and got me a Ram. It's a Ram 1500 and, and I've, I've been absolutely loving the truck and that's what I wanted to get back into a truck this is the first time that I pulled a trailer with it and it did a great job so there's the old Durango that I've been driving for a long time and I've been trying to I've been trying to sell it and had anybody interested in it so anybody interested in an old Dodge Durango with a 360 in it let me know so this is all the stuff that I brought home today from work I got some some little extra goodies in here so this was the main thing i was trying to bring home today to this and the table but so this was the shaper table off of my dad's old shaper way back when when i was probably 17 or 18 years old dad had me scrap that thing because we couldn't we couldn't sell it you know that was back when nobody wanted a shaper uh, late 90s and so we took it apart so that i could haul it and I took the table off of it and we saved it and uh, we used it a few times on the horizontal bore mill and it worked really good for that so what I'm planning on doing with this is using it for that Carlton radial arm drill press that I'm getting because it doesn't actually have the table for it it's missing that but I got a really good deal on the drill so this uh, can be used as a table so I should be able to lay it down say lay it flat down on this surface right here and clamp it down and then use this as the top uh, mounting surface for a vise or mounting your work down now i will say that this is not machined here so i'll have to machine that so we'll come up with a fun way to get that machine maybe on the shaper if i can fit it on there and if not we'll put it on the k and t mill and just uh, mill the back of it there so that's that right there here is my home built uh, well, it's kind of wedged in there right now so this is my home built welding positioner i showed a long time ago on the forklift axle repair video this is just something that i threw together with materials around our shop a long time ago it's an old three jaw chuck that was very worn out and machined a backing plate to bolt to it that goes all the way through this tube i put some bronze bushings in there got a little set screw if you need to lock it down this is a hand wheel that come off of like a landis uh, sewing machine for like leather repair that I had salvaged a piece of tubing a piece of plate you can just tack it right down to the welding table in the corners to hold it in place and it works really good for uh, welding over here using your left hand or you can flip it around and do it the other way but it's just a manually operated welder a uh, welding position I mean so we finally got that home that's a, a rotary um, yeah, a rotary table that my friend Lance Baltzy gave me a while back, a couple years ago. And I just unloaded it down there at work and I've been saving it there. Um, this is a this is a tail stock for a, a dividing head. I was using that at work for the super spacer. So brought it home. We got our fireball tool squares. These are the ones that Jason had sent me a long time ago. And I've, I've had them at work and I used them down there a few times. So brought the fireball tool squares home and then this guy right here is a picnic table that belonged to my granddad and what's really amazing about this is that how heavy it was built i mean look at this this is like that that doesn't that looks thicker than quarter but it looks like that's either quarter or five sixteenths by two flat bar that was uh, made 
you know, welded together. Look at all that weld in there, man. Piece of angle iron across the middle. And then the top of it, so it's upside down, is formed. You know, it was like, I don't know if it was stamped or what, but very heavy duty. And then there's the benches. So it was originally all welded together. It was a piece of flat bar that went across the bottom that the uh, benches and the table were welded onto. And for moving purposes, I had torched them and cut them apart. And I had this at work. We used to have it out under our tree, and it was the it was the uh, break area for the you know when you want to go out and smoke a fatty. And it was just a break break table. So uh, I want to redo this. I want to actually clean this table up and fix you know fix the legs here so that it sits properly. We'll put some pads on here or put another bar on there or something like that. Weld them so it's nice and level. Do the same thing for the table. Have it so it's not sitting here and have like a bar across there. And then I want to take it up to the powder coater and have them blast it and then uh, powder coat it nice. Uh, maybe do white or something like that and be able to utilize it here in the backyard or maybe on the um, the patio over there, you know, the back, the back patio. So that's going to be a fun project and very nice to see that. This is another gear that I salvaged from work that was bad. They replaced it with a new one. And I like saving these because these, these could be used for a pedestal, to, uh, for a grinder. And that's exactly why I saved it. I want to use it just for a pedestal. There's some big parallels that I've used on the bore mill. I bought these from Jack Hoying uh, a while back and uh, got them home. So there's a load of iron that I got to get off here. I'm going to, I'm going to get the table off and then I'll be able to use the pallet jack to uh, get this pallet of all this heavy stuff off here. going to do is go ahead and just transfer this stuff over to my other pallet that I've got uh, I got some vices on it you know like long-term storage stuff so I'm just going to set this stuff off move this pallet out bring that one in and set it set that stuff back down on here I think I can fit all this stuff on here. vice right there and this are, are back together again from the same machine I believe it was a 32 inch Cincinnati Schaefer I never did document the actual make but I'm pretty sure it was a Cincinnati this was something else that I picked up this year a few months ago real nice this is an original Monarch steady rest for my lathe for, for a 16 inch lathe and I got this locally at another uh, machine shop and uh, Fortunately, he gave it to me. He said take it and see if it fits and if it fits you can keep it So it's been sitting in weather for a very long time. So it's completely frozen together all these bolts are frozen together, but since I didn't have an original steady rest for my Monarch I took it and I would like this to be another uh, channel project one day get this thing completely apart 
Uh, maybe try some evaporus, soaking it, the whole thing in evaporus for a while and see if it helps loosen things up. But anyway, since it was here, I just wanted to share that with you. Got a little weight to her now. spot for my storage stuff right here hey I want to give everybody a reminder since it's the holiday season now to uh, head over there to the storefront and uh, pick you up a shirt for uh, for you or a loved one or you know it's everybody's looking for some gift ideas right so we have the uh, the booth machine t-shirts we have the a bomb 79 t-shirts and we still have some of the older uh, classic uh, shop life t-shirts you can get you can get short sleeve, long sleeve, you can get hoodies. There's quite a bit to pick from over there. So be sure to check that out. I'll have the link in the video description down below. Click that, it'll take you right to it. And uh, go pick you up a A-Bomb 79 t-shirt. Get one for the whole family, okay? So here's an interesting little project that I gotta work on. What we have is a brand new eight inch Bison three tall chuck. There's the flat back. Takes a backing plate. And what I'm going to do is make, I'm going to machine this plate right here into what looks like this, like a shiv, a pulley shiv. And we're going to machine this plate to accept that three jaw chuck to bolt onto it. And what this will allow us to do in the case where we need one of these large pulleys on a uh, gearbox input shaft for our spin test, we'll be able to use three jaw chuck and clamp to the shaft and be able to have the pulley mounted on it as well. So that's the plan. This is the diameter that I'm going to match it up to right here, except that it's going to be a single groove, not a double groove. A single groove pulley uh, machines. It'll have a register to bolt on the back of that chuck. We'll have a little bore in there to kind of eliminate some material. And I'll probably machine some of this out uh, to help reduce some of the weight of that. got a one inch pilot hole, we're using the three and seven eighths. Now that we got a rough bore in there and we've got 
I've got a little area turned here that's true with the board and we've got one side faced. What I'm gonna do is flip this thing around and chuck the board here. And then we're gonna machine the back side with the register and we'll also machine the OD for the for the B group. And then that'll get both of those true with each other. Both sides cut. We got it measured out where it needs to be, so we'll try the belt next and see how the belt feels. It's perfectly centered on there. I don't have a chamfer on this side, that's why this side looks a little bit more narrow. I still got a chamfer that one. There's one of our belts that we'll be using.
ready to come out of the lathe and go to the milling machine and put some holes in it now. Alright, we got our six hole pattern drilled and now we're going to go in there with this counterbore tool. So I drilled the holes uh, 3 8 so that it would hold this 3 8 pilot right there. Then we're going to counterbore 11 16 just like that. We'll get this in there and we'll get a depth set and then get a counterboard for our bolt. Alright, there's the first one counterboard there. So this is a 10 millimeter bolt right there, but I don't have these counterboards in millimeter sizes, so that's why I'm having to I had to drill the hole 3 8 to begin with to use the pilot. And then once these are all counterboard, I'll go back through there with the larger drill to open them up so that the threads will go through there. But there's the there's the head sitting in there. All right. So for the depth, I'm using this stop right here. I run it down to that, and that'll put my depth at the right location every time. Oh, <laughs> I lost my pilot. All right, there she is, drilled counterboard. I got the hole drilled to put the 10 millimeter bolt there. She's ready to go. We'll have to flip it over deeper to the other side and then get this chuck mounted up and see how it looks. All right, there we go. This guy is ready to bolt on. All right, there's the register side. I got the chuck and the vise here, clamped a, a piece of tubing. And we'll get it laid up on there and, and make sure the holes fit. It turned out nice. There we go. Some of the bolts right here. like it's gonna work. Alrighty, there it is bolted on. There's the finished product, minus one one last detail. Here's the chuck wrench. And obviously that's not gonna work now. So I'm gonna make another chuck wrench. That'll be long so that it'll, it'll come out here. And I'll have plenty of room to tighten it up. But other than the truck wrench, this part is ready to go. Here's the original chuck key from Bison, which I showed you. We can go, you won't be able to use it there. So there is the A bomb chuck key. That I just made. Used a piece of one inch stress proof. It was a drop, so I didn't really have much to have to cut off of that. And then the crossbar there is actually 9 16 It was another drop that I had, plus I had a reamer that size. Got enough room there where the guys can get their hands in there and be able to tighten and loosen that up without getting into the shiv. So there we go. This thing is now done.
speed you got it up. 